You can just smell all of those spices and I love how there's just like floating curry leaves in there, there's floating eggplant, there's okra, there's tomatoes, and it's made with fish. I love this dish. It's one of my favorites. Hey everyone, I hope you're having an amazing day. It's Mark Weens, I'm in Bangkok, Thailand, and this morning I'm gonna go walk around and explore the historic Bangrak area, and the, specifically the area right around Harun Mosque. And around this neighborhood, this community in Bangkok is where you'll find some of the best halal street food. And people, they literally do all the cooking, oh, like right here, they do the cooking in their houses and they sell right out of their houses. We're gonna just walk around, explore, find some delicious things to eat and meet some amazing people and I'm gonna share it all with you in this video. The Harun Mosque was built uh, by Harun Bafaden and he originally came from Indonesia. Uh, he's Indonesian Arab and then they settled in this little community. We're here a little bit early before the main market opens. We're gonna start by eating some roti mataba, which is a stuffed roti. And it smells amazing. <laughs> and this is such a cool spot right here. Yes, yeah. เป็นมาตะบักไก่สองใช่มั้ยคะข้าวแกงครับมีหน่อยครับมีหน่อยครับมีหน่อยครับมีหน่อยครับมีหน่อยครับมีหน่อยครับมีหน่อยครับมีห
we're sitting here eating, the owner just brought us a bowl of dal, which is, it just finished cooking. Oh, immediately you can smell the cinnamon though. Mm. You can taste the onions, you can taste the cinnamon in there, and maybe the curry leaves. I taste some curry leaves in there too. It's a leaf that tastes just like curry, and in Thai it's called bai mui. I could snack on curry leaves all day. We are not making it very far in distance on this food tour, literally right down from where she's making the roti. Uh, they, while we were eating at the roti actually, they rolled, they rolled the giant pots and you could smell the spices of the biryani just filling the humidity. They have beef, they have chicken, but one that you don't find very often is fish. Um, and it's king mackerel, blan si. You will not walk through this alley without stopping here. Oh, okay, okay, sure. The owner of the house right here within this gate, uh, they just came out because they're ordering some biryani as well. And they, they watch our videos and they just invited us to come eat inside. So that's really, really nice of them. Uh, we're gonna get, oh, we got it. We got our biryani. Thank you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> you want some water? Thank you very much. We had originally bought our biryani in a plastic bag um, and we were going to eat it outside but the, they've invited us inside and actually they, you can step outside with your own plate and put the, put the rice and biryani on your own plate so I'm just going to, she's going to dish out again. <laughs> nice to meet you. The family here are so gracious, so welcoming. I think this one is beef and we got fish. And then they, oh, we also got an extra dish that the, they've made, which is a Burmese style curry. This one is the beef and how she scoops it in there. You can see just the caramelized onions. You can see all the spices. What I like is the color of the rice and how fluffy the rice looks uh, while just having that slight oil shimmer. Oh. The spice is mellow, but it's there. And the rice is so fluffy. And you taste that like salty, the salty onions and spice mixture. This is the difference that really makes it more of a a Thai style biryani and that sets it apart. It's a mint and coriander sauce. Add some of that and then you can take off some of the meat again and mix it with the rice. Oh yes. The sauce just balances it off perfectly. We have some home cooked curry here. There are potatoes in here, there's onions and there's chicken. Oh, this is like a, an extra. Ho 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 ho. Oh, you can see those onions are so soft and tender as well. It's just really light and really like soothing. A very light spice mixture. And then, yeah, those onions, they really just dissolve in your mouth. Yet, they still hold their shape at the same time. Okay, and we also got the fish biryani. And, and if, you can, if you can come really close in here, well, there's the rice, um, but then, there, then there's the meat or the fish. And then there's this gooey stuff which she adds to every plate. And the gooey stuff is what you want. That is where the flavor is. That's the onions, that's the spices. That's like the residue of flavor that just powers the entire dish. So every bite, you wanna grab a little piece of the meat. This is the fish um, with a little bit of that, that goo. And then add on some sauce. And then you want a, like a ratio of all three of those components to make the perfect bite. 
it's king mackerel, so it's almost like like firm like chicken, very, very firm. And then that onion spice mixture is really key. Oh, and the sauce, which gives it that um, tanginess to wrap it all together. Mm. Oh, you can taste the cloves in there. Photo time. <laughs> Okay, that was just 100% unplanned. Family was so welcoming and so friendly and so gracious. Right now it's about 10 a.m. and this is the time when more and more food opens up. So right along the main uh, walkway, there should be more food set up now. Next up, we're in this alley restaurant. It's at the back of the alley. This is someone's home in the back there, and they have tables set up that you can sit at throughout the alley as well as in their house. One of the main dishes that you have to eat here that they're known for is their gengali, which is a, a type of curry which is in this pot. You can smell all of the curry leaves and the spices. There's fish in there, there's okra. Oh, that's, I have to eat that. It smells so good. This curry is mouth-watering. It is irresistible. You can just smell all of those spices and I love how there's just like floating curry leaves in there. There's floating eggplant, there's okra, there are tomatoes, and it's made with fish. And then we also got uh, fried chicken with uh, kunkang, which is a curry paste, or what? I don't know exactly. It's, it's, like, it's like fried chicken with, with uh, spices all over it. Okay, the first thing I need to do is just take a, a scoop, take a spoon of that curry sauce. Oh, oh, that's everything I thought it was gonna be. Oh, it's, it's, it's superb. Oh, it has a sour flavor to it. It's, what I like is that it's not like too rich or oily, but it feels, it feels healthy actually. It's sour, you can taste all of those spices in there. You can really taste those curry leaves again, which just give it a, a powerful, like, aroma in your mouth. You can like smell that in your mouth. It's really, an extraordinary curry to eat. You'll mostly find this dish at Muslim uh, halal restaurants, and it is a dish you don't want to miss. It's it's so unbelievably good. Mm. Mm. That just soaks up all of that curry. This is gaitad kringali, which is uh, fried chicken with like it's just like caked in uh, a curry paste with a spice mixture. And you can see that on there, it's fried chicken. And I'm not sure what's all on there, but that looks awesome too. Anything fried chicken with extra spice on it, you know, you know it's gonna be good. Oh, oh that's a boneless piece. Mmm. I think like a bulk of it is also the coriander seed in there as well. And then it's, a, it's just like a light fragrance a little bit crispy, nice and salty of course, and just just that, that spice mixture is just like caked and caramelized on there. I'm just absolutely in love with this curry. It's, it's everything you want in a curry. It's so fragrant, it's so flavorful, it's, it's stunning. And then something you've just gotta love about this curry as well is just how they have the floating vegetables in there. The tomatoes, the eggplant, the okra. I love this dish. It's one of my favorites. That curry, that fish curry is 
unbelievable. I, I love the flavor. Again, the family is so nice. They're cooking right out of their home and just selling uh, right outside their front door. So friendly, so generous, such incredibly delicious food made with love. Okay, back out and it's the, the the stalls are pretty relaxed here. People kind of kind of open up when whenever they're ready. Um, and then more and more people should be coming here, but I think more of the stalls are starting to open now. Okay, next plate of food. The family who we met earlier on where we ate the biryani, they said this is one of the best places to eat curry. And they have a number of different curries. You just choose whatever you want. They serve it over rice or lots of people get it for takeaway as well. One of the dishes looks almost identical to masaman curry, which is a very well-known uh, Thai Persian curry. But they said it's not actually masaman, but they call it geng hindu. It just looks amazing. Looks so good, and then oh, that potato is so incredibly soft as well. Okay. Oh, that curry is awesome. Masaman curry is usually quite sweet, and even though that looks exactly like masaman, it's not sweet at all. It is a little bit spicy. You can taste again that dry spice mixture. Definitely lots of turmeric in there, and. I got a nice chunk of potato actually that's very, very soft and creamy. I might have to ask her to add some more of the curry sauce though because as I sat here and talked, it sort of absorbed into the rice. I gotta get some more sauce. Okay, got it. Oh, there we go. Cup and my cup. Cup and my cup. Oh, I'm so happy to have more sauce. And she gave me another potato as well. Oh, look at that. That curry is a winner. Oh man, it's awesome. I'm starting to get really full. That was another extraordinary plate of food. I'm pretty sure everything you see here is delicious. But when you come here, this is the dish that you don't want to miss. And this dish goes fast too, so they bring it here. It's already half sold out just within like 30 minutes of being open. It is a stunner of a dish. So ye. This is a dessert that we had to try. It's very well known in this neighborhood and she makes the original version. It's called So Yi and I've never had it before. It's, uh, let's try it. It looks like a pudding and I have no idea. Oh wow, you can see like a texture in there as well. It smells a little milky, but that's really, really all I can smell. Is there anything on the bottom? Or no, it's all solid through. Oh no, it's all solid through. It's like a, it looks like a, a pudding or like a porridge almost. Look at that texture. Mm. Mm, it's, it has sort of like a, almost like a cornmeal porridge texture to it. You get, you feel these little, little like beads almost. It's a little bit sweet. It's uh, a little bit like caramely, milky tasting, almost like a vanilla pudding. It's extremely well known in this neighborhood too. Something you've got to try. That's a lot of food and there's so much good to eat that you don't want to stop. One of the best things about this entire community is that everybody knows each other, everybody is so friendly, and it has such an incredible community feel. I mean, we're right in historic central Bangkok, surrounded by skyscraper buildings, uh, but this is just a little oasis of history, friendly people, delicious halal food. Ying just bought a, a sarong right over here. Um, 
for her grandmother, but it has such a such a friendly, such an amazing feel. Can you show us those sarongjing that you just bought? Oh, nice. Oh, batik, it's actually, whoa. <laughs> it almost fell out. Um, this is actually batik from Indonesia. Oh, that's nice. This is for Ying's grandmother. There's a noodle stall which is back down this alley, which the, the family also told us that we have to eat there uh, before we leave, so that will be next. It's called Guitiaopo. This is a dish I've never tried before. It's very rare to find. First chopped on some lettuce on the bottom, and then she put in some bean sprouts, um, and then a handful of the wide rice noodles, which is called senya and Thai. Then she added on some chicken, which looks like it's just been kind of blanched. Um, then some shrimp, which have been cooked in their, their own juices. And then she added on uh, some peanuts and some dry shrimp, as well as some uh, toasted fried garlic. And then also she added on a bunch of herbs, the basil, you've got the, the sweet basil as well as a bunch of mint as well. And then she added on some uh, pekinu, which are the, the tiny bird's eye chilies. And then it's also served with the, the sauce on the side. Oh, she's gonna open my sauce for me. Okay, okay, all the sauce goes on. Oh, beautiful. And I think you... Okay, and then mix it all up. Mix it all up with the noodles. So it's like a noodle mix, a noodle salad. Refreshing with all the herbs and the shrimp and the peanuts and noodles. Okay, I think that's good. Where's my, where'd my chili go though? Oh, there we go. Here's a guy. Some chicken, some, some noodles, some, some herbs. Mm. That is, that's a, a noodle salad. The noodles are sticky. I got a shrimp in that bite. The sauce is a little bit on the sweet side, but also kind of tangy. And then I love all those herbs, the mint, the basil. The herbs are what make it for me. Mm. Oh my God. Mm. Very refreshing. It really eats like a salad, but at the same time, you've got some hearty noodles in there, so it's a little more filling than just a, just a vegetable salad. It's called kanombeng yuan, and the batter is a mixture of flour, egg, and coconut milk. And then she she spreads that out throughout the whole wok, so it's a really paper thin sheet. And then she adds in uh, there's cilantro, there is coconut with the mankung, which is the shrimp head oil, the shrimp head uh, tamale, and then she adds in some tofu, she adds in some bean sprouts, some peanuts, and some uh, pickled radish. I think it's pickled radish. Uh, and then she folds it up into a package, so all those ingredients are wrapped within that, that pancake, like crepe, and then it's served with a ajat, which is a, a vinegar with cucumbers and chilies and shallots. Oh, that's still hot and fresh. I'm gonna, let's just cut it in half though, so that we can all see the insides, the interiors of this thing. And it's like a, it's like a big jumbo pocket. But you can see it's all filled with vegetables, all those vegetables she had in, lots of bean sprouts, the coconut in there, and the cilantro. Okay, and you gotta add some of the hot just the, the sauce. Oh, and some of the cucumbers and shallots. All right, let me try some, uh, some of this. You can see it feels like an, it sort of feels like an omelet, but at the same time, it sort of feels different because it's got the coconut milk in it and the, the flour, so it's more like a, an egg crepe. Oh, I like that. The bulk of the dish is bean sprouts, which have just been lightly stir-fried, sauteed, so they have, a, they still have that full crunch, uh, but they're sauteed at the same time. You taste the saltiness of that coconut and the, the shrimp juices. And then, what else is in there? Oh, the tofu is in there, but it's a very firm tofu. Um, and then you've got those pickled radish crunches as well. It's awesome. It's delicious. It's, 
It looks like it's gonna be filling, but this is actually quite light, kind of fluffy, and mostly like, like crunchy vegetables. The kind of bung is really excellent. The noodles is also very good. I love that mixture, but it depends on how much of that dressing you add, how sweet it will be. So if you add all of the dressing, it's a little on the sweet side. It was a little sweet for me. Uh, so next time I would add a little bit of, uh, less of that dressing. Okay, we are just leaving and I think I have to finish this food tour for you right now out of by default. Oh man, I am just stuffed. It's been so fantastic. We've met so many friendly people. I think we know about half of the community here now. But people are so nice and so gracious. It's so refreshing. Kapun makap. Sadikap kapun makap. I want to say a huge thank you, Kapun Makap, to everybody who we've met, um, including the family who we were eating right down there and they just invited us into their house to eat. Uh, so I want to say a huge thank you. Hey, what's up? What's up? What's up? <laughs> what's up, man? How are you? Okay, something to just quickly tell you is that if you come here, you'll find the majority of food within this entire community is all halal. And you can come here any day of the week but it depends, not, not everything will be open. You'll find the most food on Friday from about 10 a.m. to about 2 p.m. because more people come into this neighborhood to go to the service at Harun Mosque. And so that's why there's the most food on Friday. That's gonna be it for this vlog. I wanna say a huge thank you for watching this video. Please remember to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And also make sure you subscribe. I'm gonna be publishing lots more food and travel videos. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you on the next video.